Smart Wool, Icebreaker, North Face, Dickies, Vans, Supreme. What do all these brands have in common? They are owned by VF Corporation, one of the worst performing S&P 500 stocks in 2024. And they happen to own the shoe brand Ultra. So last year, VF Corporation performed so poorly, they most likely are facing selling off some major brands from their portfolio. And I I wonder if Ultra is gonna end up being one of those brands. But before we get into the Ultra section of this video and the shoes that I plan on using in 2024, let's first look at what I have been using. 2023 was all about these Solomon Ultra 4s. And as a backpacking newbie, I think I put around 130, 150 miles last year. Certainly not a seasoned pro's worth of miles, but I put some time in them and enough to know exactly what I like and what I don't like. So first, this is what really kind of worked out for me. There's a section right here where there's just that natural crease and I really expected the stitching here to fail. Even just 100 miles or whatever it was I put on it, I really expected this to not last much longer than 100 miles. And I mean like, I really put these to the test and in the, the 100 plus miles, I mean, we're talking really sharp rocks, scrambling, water crossings, and even a bit of mud and snow. I just, in my opinion, these look really good after 150 miles or so and using these all throughout last year. But what about the bad? So the outsoles on these really look like they can kind of handle anything. They're not Vibram outsoles, so that's kind of a, a heads up right away. Anyone who ever describes the outsoles of these shoes as like really sticky or grippy, like in general, yes, like wet logs or water crossings or wet rocks or loose gravel, anything like that, you need to stabilize yourself no matter what shoes you have on. But these grips, I just had a feeling that I needed to take extra precautions and, and really, I just did not trust these soles. And I didn't fully lay out the name of these. It's the X Ultra 04 Gore-Tex Mids. And it's that last section, the Gore-Tex section of it, that was a rookie mistake for me. Backpacking and day hiking in California and the instances that you're gonna need a full-on Gore-Tex boot, it's zero, it's, it's none. It's none of the time. All right, that's not really true. There's like a couple weeks out of the year, but it's like, it's way, way overkill for what you would need, at least in the area that I do most of my outdoor stuff. I mean, let's face it, does this proprietary fabric breathe while also keeping moisture from getting in at the same exact time? I mean, that's another video, but it's just something that I found myself not needing. It's way, way overkill. Basically, most of the year, you've got what? You're 65 degrees to you get into your 80s and your 90s and my feet were just boiling in these shoes. So in my case, you end up with hot feet, your feet are sweating, the moisture's trying to escape. Right away, I think it was the first day that I ever wore these, I noticed that I was getting these sweat stains in the creases of the shoes, and those stains just never went away. And I wash these things with you know mild soap and stuff. Every time I wear these, I give them a little bit of a light wash and those stains never came out. So with the Gore-Tex feature of these, I've just I've decided that I really like these, but they just operate way too hot for my feet. It's just way too much. And that takes me in my new direction in 2024, Ultra Trail Runners. So first up, we have the Olympus 5. These are 11.8 ounces on my home scale, 33 millimeter stack height, and a zero millimeter heel to toe drop. So this is Ultra's, probably their plushest trail runner. You've got a very, very soft, midsole right there. And of course we have Vibram outsoles on these things. I came across a review from a user I used to love ultras and they stated these shoes run more like clunky bricks on your feet than a shoe. Unfortunately, it also doesn't last, hard pass. So you will see photo after photo of a very unfortunate thing that happens with these very sticky soles. And unfortunately is these sections right here that become unstuck. And then you will also see a lot of bad customer reviews with that creasing section right here separating from the midsole like it like it seems to do on a lot of ultra shoes. So going to the outsoles, you can actually see the Vibram sections of this. This black section on the outside which wraps around the front, that's Vibram. And then they've got these glued on pieces and a little badging right there, that's also Vibram as well but unfortunately these are all glued onto a section of the shoe that they call the trail claw. And you can definitely feel that that's the same density as the midsole. So it looks to me 
like they literally glued the vibram sections of this into the midsole which also wraps down into this trail claw area and that's definitely not gonna last. It is so soft. It's the same as the sidewall here. So not only do you have the issues with this section just wearing down very, very quickly, because this is glued on to a very soft foam, it seems like these have a tendency to delaminate pretty quickly uh, just after a few uses in some cases. So why would I go and buy something that has such a bad reputation for failing? I think it's just, it's stubbornness a little bit and hoping for a different outcome. So I volunteer. I volunteer this year to put these to the test and see if the rumors are true. I know photos can't lie, but I'm curious to find out uh, what actually happens through a test of, of something that I'm gonna put them through. Since I'm not a through hiker and it's not something I'm really interested in, and it's more of the, the really major one to three trips a year, the day hikes on the weekend, I'm hoping that I'm able to put these through less wear and, and allow them to last a little bit longer, kind of with my style of, as, of adventures. And I'm doubling down. I actually, I made the stupid decision once and then I made it again twice. So we have two colorways that I'm gonna be messing with this year. I figured if it's, if it's a really, really hot day and the sun's just beating down, I'll throw these on. If it's a cloudy, cooler day, I'll throw on the black ones whatever. Part of my thoughts with this too is like something I do with my regular shoes, like with Converse or whatever, I buy multiple pairs and I switch between them, constantly switching and that keeps, you know, the midsoles of any kind of shoe from wearing out a little bit and the outer sole lasts a little bit longer. I, at least in my case, I find that to be the, the situation. So hopefully that's the case with these. Maybe switching between the two, they'll last a little bit longer. We'll see. Next is the Lone Peaks. This is the eighth version. It's 10.2 ounces on the home scale, 25 millimeter stack height, and of course a zero millimeter heel to toe drop. And something I forgot to mention, which is also on the Olympus 5s, is you have this proprietary dumb Velcro gator system. They both come with methods to hook gators up, but it's a gator system that they want you to use, of course, which a lot of people have an issue with, and I can see why. This is the tried and true, typical through hiker, ultra running shoe that you're gonna see people love so much. It seems to me that the Lone Peak is what really won its fan base with Ultra, but it is also the shoe over the last couple of years that has lost a lot of that fan base due to some quality issues. So that same company that we were talking about owns Ultra since 2018. It seems kind of funny to me that after that acquisition, it's just a matter of years before you start seeing some major quality issues. It seems like that's around the time when things really started to fall apart for this manufacturer. If it's budgetary cutbacks, if it's less time for R&D and material testing and all that kind of stuff, it just seems very interesting the timing around that 2018 acquisition. But it does seem like this time around, one of the big changes on the eights, which overall there's not much changes from the sixes and the sevens from what I've read, but the big change here is this more robust ripstop mesh that's on this shoe. And a lot of folks are hoping that that's gonna change with this crease area that seems to kind of destroy all ultras pretty quickly. Unfortunately, these do not have the Vibram soles like the Olympus 5s. I don't know when I'll learn my lesson and stop buying things without a Vibram sole because everything else out there just doesn't hold up to Vibram. So Ultra has decided to call this proprietary outsole the Max Tracks. And they've also decided to label some of the lugs on here Trail Claw. So it's, it's very confusing. This actually feels like the same density as the lugs that are on the Ultra 4s. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea of how these potentially will wear. Something that I didn't notice on the Olympus yeah, so here's a side-by-side -side of the soles. And something that I see on the Lone Peak 8s that's not on the Olympus is these kind of forward-facing shelves. So it seems like, you know, if you're coming down a hill, well, it'd be like this. If you're hill striking and you're coming down a hill or some loose gravel or whatever, this kind of, that forward, facing shelf kind of starts to make sense. So that's actually pretty cool. And I don't see that 
on these giant boats. The Lone Peak 6 outsoles seemed like they were pretty poor performers as far as you know grip and traction and so on. Apparently it was updated pretty heavily in the 7s and it's even better in the 8s from what I've read. But it's still not a Vibram sole and you would think that this is such a loved model with the through hikers that you would switch over to a Vibram sole already but they've decided not to do that. Maybe, maybe they'll change their mind on the next model. I said I wasn't going to mess with another pair of the uh, Ultra 04s, but I decided to give these a try because I'm still experimenting. So I actually have to read the title of these from the computer because there's no way I can memorize this. This is the X Ultra 4 Midwinter Thinsulate Clima Solomon. That is so ridiculous. Oh, shit, I forgot one more word. Waterproof. That's all one title. Two of those words are clearly made up and that is just way too long. You know what, to be honest, besides boiling in the Gore-Tex versions of these during the summer or kind of most of the year, this shoe, this actually performed pretty great. I was really happy with this. It's so light and it's actually very, very nimble, kind of like a runner. I mean, this shoe did a great job last year. So I wasn't too concerned with giving another shot to something more aimed for winter, of course. Last year, if you follow the channel, you know that I scouted out a spot in San Jacinto that I haven't had a chance to make it back to, but I plan to as soon as I can. One of the things that I wasn't able to do as quickly as I wanted was start investing in more winter style gear. So this was one of my first steps to, to preparing myself for some winter conditions. So of course, this is the all winter version of the Solomon X Mid. And underneath this very soft, fuzzy, kind of fleece vibe feeling, there is a thin layer of that made up word, thinsulate. And I decided to dig deep into what that even is. You can see it actually labeled inside the, the boot right there. There, this thin slit. It's something that you can buy in bulk and apparently, if I am understanding correctly, this is used as an insulation for acoustic dampening in like a van. If you, if you have a van life thing going on and you want to acoustically dampen some of the noise and there's all kinds of different models of it. This particular model is a 200 gram, 10 millimeter thick lining of it. But I just thought that that was really funny. Like this material is an acoustic dampening material, but they decided to use it for shoes. I hope that I researched that right, because I cannot find anything else on the 3M website with the word Thinsulate that isn't an acoustic dampening purpose. So I don't know, maybe they want you to be able to sneak around a little bit. And from everything I read, these are actually turning out to be a pretty robust casual winter backpacking boot. You've got 23 degrees Fahrenheit for the comfort rating. You've got 14 degrees Fahrenheit for the limit, and you've got five degrees Fahrenheit for the extreme. So not bad. The only downfall that I'm expecting from these is again, we're back to another proprietary sole that someone's trying to get away with. To me, this actually looks a lot like the soles that you're gonna see on what they call the all-terrain version of this. So this would be the winter, Contra grip and this would be the all-terrain contra grip and what they're claiming is that the winter contra grip the one in black has deeper lugs and so okay at this moment the way these are two compared i've obviously worn these all-terrain contra grip lugs down a little bit i've very much softened the edges of this this is like a medium soft kind of sole i would say so i've, I've worn these down a little bit and as i hold them up i can definitely tell that they are a little bit more worn down than the brand new ones of course these haven't even touched the ground yet but boy I mean, if these if these lugs were fresh, the differences in the depth of the winter version of these must be like, you would have to get a pair of calipers out. There's no way. So they look brand new. They look like they would be a little deeper, but I just, I don't know. I don't really see it. Either way, it doesn't matter. I really don't think that either of these soles are made for wet conditions at all. I just don't trust them. Last year when I was trekking around in the snow in these, I didn't run into any issues, but I was still pretty nervous. So I definitely will be getting some micro spikes for these. I think when you're looking at these shoes, even on Solomon's own site, they say that metal studs in icy conditions 
is the best way to assure a grip or something along those lines. So even they suggest to not just go it alone in icing conditions on these. It's just, it's not worth it. These are just not sticky enough. So in 2023, we had these bad boys. They did a fantastic job. I would, I would actually recommend these. If it wasn't for the Gore-Tex, these things would still be the the main shoe that i used all throughout the rest of 2024. we're already digging into 2024 so this is going to be the experiment this year and i will definitely let you guys know how that goes and which ones end up being my favorite thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys next time